Dan and this is Ben. Hey guys. We are the experimental expediters. We are on permanent vacation, a working vacation. We left our jobs, our corporate jobs with secure incomes, daily, uh, weekly paychecks. Nine to five. Nine guys. to five. <laughs> know what to expect every day. Kind of got bored of it. Been seven and a half months of fun, excitement. We've seen the whole country, Canada, Montreal, Toronto. And we are going to talk to you guys about it, how you might be able to do this as well. And you can join us for the adventure, the Experimental Expediters, right after this. You don't ever want to do this. Don't fall asleep while you're driving. If you've gotten to this point, you probably didn't plan things out right. Every truck driver has probably, even car drivers have experienced this at one point or another. You're driving 10, 11 hours. First, of course, it's eight, because you need a break after eight. But if you're driving overnight or you're already tired, you didn't plan things out as well as you could have. In expediting, sometimes you get to run at the last minute. Someone's, the, the, someone has to keep driving the whole time. Uh, you just got to do your best, plan it out the best you can, and we'll talk about that. So today's video is about planning long drives, staying awake. Uh, I'm going to talk, like I mentioned, a little about planning out how, you, how and when you sleep. If you know you have to drive all night and you just slept regular uh, hours at night and your co-driver is going to drive during the day and you've got to drive at night. It's going to be hard to do because uh, if you can't fall asleep during the day because you slept all night and then you've got to drive all night, that can be pretty difficult. So there's some planning involved. Um, certain sleeping pills are not allowed on trucks. Uh, we all know DOT physicals and drug tests, you can't, it's not safe to have certain things in your system. Uh, but there are ways around this. Um, we're going to talk a little about, about that, and in today's video I'm going to talk about the legal stuff, caffeine, five-hour energy drinks, uh, things like that. So I'm going to go into all my coffee uh, varieties that I carry on the truck, uh, whatever you choose to have. I have tea, I have coffee, espresso, I have beans, I have a grinder, I'm crazy. I admit it. I'm coffee crazy. But I'll, I'll, I'll show you that, and uh, this, is, this video is about staying awake long drives. So let's say you know you've got a overnight run. You've got to be somewhere in 24 hours. You've got to get across the country uh, and you just have enough time to get there. You know you're going to be running constantly. Um, I've seen some videos on the 8-5 rule. Um, we have a dog, Maggie, and we need to walk her periodically. So I, I found that the 10-10 method works for us. Uh, either one of us drives 10, 11 hours. Uh, that works fine. We just keep that going. Um, that's worked. But if, if you know you've got a drive coming up for all night long, someone's got to drive the person in advance. If you know a day ahead, I'll stay up really late. I might take a two hour nap. I might, st on many occasions, I've stayed up all night long. I find projects to do bookkeeping, different things on the computer, because it's a small area and I don't want to bother my co-driver who has to sleep at night. Both people have to get enough sleep to be safe. You have to have at least six, seven, eight hours of sleep to be safe. Both people. Uh, so if I'm making noise and bothering the other people, that's bad too. Now, now we're both unsafe. So I'm going to make sure I don't bother the other person. I'm going to try and stay up all night. Uh, and that way I can be exhausted enough to fall asleep the next day. That works for me. Maybe it doesn't work for you. You've got another, something else that works better. But that has worked for me uh, really well. Uh, I've found it very difficult as a new truck driver to sleep while my partner's driving. 
Um, we're new truck drivers. And when we first started out, I think I was scared to death that my co-driver was driving and I'm back there sleeping and I figured at any minute, what if she falls asleep, I'm gonna wind up, the truck's off the road and we're dead. And that truck bounces around so much, I, every 17 seconds I thought that's what was happening because it's pretty bumpy back there. Uh, so I found it very difficult to fall asleep. It took several weeks of me really getting used to sleeping back there to be able to sleep during the day. A lot of our runs in the beginning didn't require round the clock driving. Um, but once you're comfortable falling asleep while the other person is driving, you'll, it, it, it's not a big deal. But it's, it's not normal for you to sleep during the day uh, while a truck's going 60, 70 miles an hour down the road bouncing around. It, it's not easy. So that's something to think about. Uh, it took a lot of getting used to. So I had to prepare the sleeping area to make sure it's dark. There are covers in our trucks. Some trucks don't have it. You can get the uh, window, uh, windshield, uh, sunscreens and you can tape those in place in windows. You want to have a nice dark environment. You want to close your curtains. You want to make sure you have an agreement with your co-driver. Don't wake me up unless it's really necessary because if uh, she wants a drink and she says, hey, hey Dan, can you get me a drink and I should just fall asleep and it's difficult for me to fall back asleep and I gotta drive all night. Now we just made a safety issue. So you gotta work things out with your driving partner. Make sure you've got an agreement and understanding. Don't wake the other person up unnecessarily. Uh, because that becomes a safety issue. Um, so that's one of the things. Uh, have a nice quiet area. Make sure you're going to be tired enough to fall asleep. And there are certain things you can take to help you fall asleep. Melatonin. Melatonin is a, body, uh, a chemical your body produces. Uh, when it's nighttime, it's normal to fall asleep at night. When it's daytime, it's not normal to fall asleep at night. Your body has chemicals that regulate that. Melatonin overrides that. So if you're sleeping during the day, melatonin is actually a pretty good thing to use. Um, with my experience, I don't wake up groggy after using melatonin. Um, so uh, that's one of the things I use. So there are a couple sleep aids that are legal. Um, there's one I have prescription that is okay per DOT, and I try not to take it very much. If I took it every day, it wouldn't work anymore. Um, i trying to think of the name of that one. I can't think of the name of it. It is legal, and my doctor prescribed it, and I don't really use it very much. However, melatonin. This, this will help you sleep during the day. Uh, you don't need much more than 5 milligrams, probably 10. There's probably more than you need. I get, get the 10. And another thing that helps you relax is a couple hundred milligrams of L-theanine. L-theanine helps you relax. There are some sleep... Uh, Supplements that include L-theanine, melatonin, chamomile, um, tryptophan, uh, those are perfectly fine as well. You just have to, have to take them early enough, an hour or so before you want to go to sleep because it takes a while for those to work. Melatonin and L-theanine, they take about 30 to 45 minutes to really, really work. Um, warm milk, whatever works for you. Make sure you're relaxed. You don't want to have a lot of things on your mind. You don't want to be worried about your co-driver driving. That takes some getting used to. So these are some of the things to help you get to sleep. I'm also going to talk about some things to stay awake. That's next. So I was talking to you about earlier, having a supply of caffeine is important. Now I think I've overdone it, uh, but I'm fully equipped for whatever choice I've made, depending on if I'm in a hurry or not, if I have the time, sometimes before I go to bed, I just want some decaf. Uh, Sometimes I'm in the mood for some tea, and rather than buy expensive tea bags, uh, I actually bought a pound of bulk tea for about the same price that I would have paid for a box of like 10 or 20 tea bags. And I've got a tea ball. Just open it up, scoop it in, uh, close it, put it in your cup, and I can even stir it after it's steeped about five minutes, I can stir my, my uh, if I want a little sugar or, or cream or something like that. Uh, dump it in the trash, rinse it out, and it's good for the next time. Uh, it's always good to have some travel mugs. This is going back. Uh, this is my milk frother. I like, I, like, I like a latte, cappuccino. And because I have an espresso, it froths the coffee enough. I don't feel I need this. Um, before, I had a... Uh, regular espresso machine and kept this on board but I don't use it much so I think I'm gonna bring it back 
Uh, another thing I highly recommend you have with you is a kettle. Now, if you have a kettle and you have no other means to make coffee, you can get away with a French press. I'll put that up here for a second. So the original French press. Uh, I went online and bought some coffee that was specially ground. Coarse ground. Yeah, it's bold, you know what the rest of the word is. Uh, it's just like any other ground coffee. It's finer than I wanted. Um, so if you have a coffee grinder, like a burr grinder where you can actually change the settings. Let me see if I can get in there. You can change the settings. See, that's even a picture of a French press. You can actually, whoa, I'm getting in. My avalanche is falling. You can get the, 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 the coarseness or the finest you want for depending on the type of coffee you're making. So for this, you want a coarser ground. You're going to measure. You want something to measure the coffee with. Measure the coffee. One scoop for about a six ounce cup. Put the grounds in first. Put enough water for the amount of coffee you put in. This holds about 30 ounces of water. So that's enough coffee for two people the way we drink it. Actually, one and a half. And the kettle has a level that shows you how much water you're putting in. So if I'm, if I'm doing this, uh, you got to convert this one's in liters. So I know how much to put in there based on that. Uh, the kettle's really quick. Plugs in, a couple minutes, you've got hot water. You can put the grounds in there, and the steeping process takes five minutes. Four, four minutes is what they recommend. I do five minutes. And you got coffee. If you're really in a hurry, and other than chewing on some coffee beans, which I can't say I haven't done, I've done that, I like to keep some instant coffee on hand. So this is, it happens to be Tim Hortons. I think I bought it in Canada. Um, and I also have, once in a while, I'm in the mood for some chicory coffee, and I'll make that in the French press. But I also save the cans for when I buy beans. My favorite beans to buy is the um, Starbucks espresso beans. I never use it. I keep my beans, so it keeps them fresh. Some people keep a bag of them in the freezer. If I have a big bag, I'll keep some in the freezer. Um, some people don't recommend it, some people do, but it keeps the oils good. So if you don't want to grind your coffee and you want an espresso grind, you can always buy Cafe Bustelo or they have some much less expensive ones in the Latin markets. For about $1.50 you can get a brick of coffee like that. Uh, so that is regular coffee that's already ground. Got my beans that I buy pre-ground. This is for an espresso machine. Instant talked about my tea, have decaf beans that sometimes I am in the mood for, and my preferred method of making coffee, after I've tried them all, I've tried the K-cup, I've tried regular drip coffee makers, uh, I'm not doing a commercial for an espresso, this is the virtual line, the new one, uh, and their cartridges are pretty expensive, they're a dollar per cartridge, and what does a cartridge look like? This is not it, this is something else. Um, so I'll show you what a cart, this is just a sample pack here. So they have, they have some different flavors. I haven't really found their specialty flavors to be very strong or overwhelmingly noticeable when they say it's got a, a fruit bouquet or this floral bouquet. I haven't noticed it to be that noticeable. So this is what one of the cartridges looks like. On the, if you choose to use an espresso machine. And I'm going to tell you why I've, I've chosen it. It's not just because I like the coffee, because it works well in the truck. I used an espresso machine, a really good one, and if the, if the machine wasn't exactly level, it wouldn't work at all. I thought my machine was broken. So there are different types. Now, right here, that this is a 5-ounce. So if you can see it on there. 5-ounce. So there's different sizes. So if you look, that's an, it's a little wobbly, it's a bent out of shape a little. That's an espresso cartridge. It's empty, it's empty, it's been used, I've cleaned it out. This one is, it can either be a double espresso or a 
five ounce coffee. This is either a 7.75 ounce coffee or they also make the same cartridge with a larger, like a 10 ounce. And I don't, it's not my favorite because it seems to be a little watered down, so I don't usually use those. Um, but there's only three sizes, but there's actually five sizes that the coffee maker will make based on the barcode. And underneath here, ah, is a barcode. So it knows, there, I dropped that too. It knows which amount of coffee, and not only amount, but how to spin. It's got a um, centrifuge. Spins the coffee and puts water through it at pressure. And what comes out is a really flavorful, full-bodied coffee. Um, but it, it, based on the barcode, we'll do it differently. It's different speeds, different amounts of water through it, and different pressures, different uh, It'll take longer to make coffee. Depends on the type of barcode it's reading. So why do I have all this other stuff down here? Okay. These are not have nothing to do with Nespresso, nor does this. I bought this from another company called My Cap, I believe. And this allows me to take an empty cartridge, and after I've used it, after I've used it, it has holes and foil on top of it, like that. I take the foil off, clean it out, and I'm able to reuse it. I put coffee in there, never overpack it, never push it down a lot. I, I'll tap it on the counter. If it's already ground coffee, I'll, I'll tap it on the counter and have it just a little bit below the top. And then I'll use this so it's the writing side up, put it down on top of the coffee, and put it into the machine just like a regular cartridge. The only thing is, you can't let it eject into the coffee, empty coffee cartridge holder. It goes in through here into there. Um, so I'll show you how I do that in a little bit. I'll, I'll actually do a demo on that. But that's just some ways to cut down on costs. You can do your, fill your own coffee, and, and by having foil caps, you can actually do your own in advance like this. I've got a bag of cartridges and I, I've bought uh, foil packs from a company called MyCap and I also have recaps. I actually prefer the recaps from, from having uh, used both. The sizing of them is a little better. So when they're too, when they're too big and you don't do them just centered, uh, the machine gives you some airs. So that is different sizes. I've got uh, some decaf, I've got different, different types of coffee in there. So that's a kind of a re, uh, recap, so to speak, on my coffee supply. What I did to show you, so this is the um, coffee pouch. I, I buy these from South Florida. So it's like Gallo Cafe. I uh, bought a huge box of them. I've got a bunch of them at home, some with me. Uh, sometimes when I want really quick espresso, don't want to grind it, it's really good and fresh because they're vacuum packed. Just tear the foil pouch open. And what you have is a pod that's used in, in uh, I, I use these in my espresso machine at home with a special adapter. Uh, there, there are certain machines that take these pods. If you take the smallest of the cartridges, which is designed for the espresso, put the pod in there, just fits in there loosely, put it in so it's level. Put this on top, and just like that, put it in the machine, put it down, and all I'm going to do is turn that to the left, so I've got that closed, and put a cup down here, I can actually raise this this cup level up a little bit. I'm not going to bother with that. Push down on the button. I make sure I have water in the reservoir. Push down on that little button right here. I just push down on it. And it's going to heat up the water. I can hear my APU working a little harder. And out comes pretty good cup of espresso. 
So if I want a latte, I'm gonna make, I'm probably gonna use four of these uh, and about five ounces of milk heated in the microwave with some sweetener. That's, that's my fast latte if I don't feel like grinding coffee. Or if I just want one quick shot of espresso. That's not bad. So it's a little wake me up or like I was telling you earlier, there's a lot of other things you need to do to keep yourself awake for a long drive. Having caffeine is one of them. So cheers. And I'm going to show you uh, my backup plan. So I mentioned a backup plan. And this isn't for everyone. It depends on your health. Uh, this might be contraindicated for certain people with high blood pressure or not, might not have tolerance to one of these. You want to try this out when you're not driving, probably before, make sure you don't have any unusual reactions. This is one of those, you've probably seen these five hour energy drinks advertised. Um, so I've tried these. They don't really do that much for me. It, if I'm starting to get kind of kind of tired and I want a little kick, uh, I might use this. This is not a substitute for pulling over and getting some rest. Uh, never ever let yourself get to where your head's bobbing. Uh, if you see that starting to happen, you, you just a, a one one and a half to two hour nap at a, at a rest area uh, should get you picked up enough. Uh, and if your time schedule doesn't allow it, then you got some other issues. It's your planning, uh, or sometimes traffic things happen, but. Then you call and you say, hey, I'm gonna be late. Uh, this is just, a, if you're starting to get to that point uh, and you get re recognize it early enough, this can help you a little bit. So what is this? This I bought, rather than buying these for a high amount of money, uh, kind of expensive, I found online, of course Amazon, um, what is this called? X Mode Energy Shots, I think that's what it is. Um, but I bought a, it says it's got about a hundred shots in here and basically comes with, um, two refillable bottles. So on the box, it tells you what your result, desired results are. Um, you don't want to overdose on this stuff. And if you just had seven coffees, you may not want to have a full two ounce bottle of this, but, uh, it, you know, I, I always happen to have the two ounce bottle. I, I don't drink more than one of these in a day. It's not recommended. Um, but I'm, I always fill them up to the two ounce level. Depending on how hard you squeeze this, how fast it comes out, and you can kind of go all over the floor if you're not careful. So I'm just going to fill one of them up to show you. And there you go. Right up to, let me see, a little bit more. Unless I'm going to squeeze it very gently. Perfect. So I never fill these up all the way. I learned my lesson the hard way. I had one of them filled up a lot. You know, you have pressure changes in different altitudes, mountains. Well, yeah, I got a little, it leaked out, and that's why I keep them in a baggie in my glove box. So when I want to have them, I already always keep them in my glove box if I know I, I want one. They're handy. Um, this came with two. I save my five hour energy shots, which I had before I got this. So I have three and just keep make sure I have them before I drive. And I do my overnight driving. My uh, driving partner doesn't like to drive at night too much, so I'll do that. And we're, uh, just like I talked to you earlier about planning your drive, uh, this is when you, even if you plan, you're still getting a little tired, you're losing energy. This is not a, re not a replacement for planning. Not a replacement for planning. Um, if your head is bobbing, this is not going to totally answer that problem. So I got to pull over, take a, take a little nap, one and a half to two hours uh, is what I do, whatever works for you. Um, but this is, it's not a bad thing to have with you. So you've got all the coffees, the teas, the caffeines. If I want to chew on some beans, I'll even do that and I don't recommend it. Um, but stay awake, stay alive. Uh, it's planning and thinking ahead on our overnight drives or long periods of driving is really what it's all about. Um, more important than anything else. If you start falling asleep, pull over. Be safe. <music>